Ever pondered the crafting behind commonplace items like bread and tea that lined the shelves of your local grocery? The making is truly captivating. And what could be more spellbinding than Japanese robots executing the perfect waffle packaging maneuver or the intricate methods of beef production in factories? Join me in this video as we unveil these and other awe-inspiring technologies that drive the food industry. It promises to be an eye-opening experience. Number 8. Coca-Cola It's impossible to know the exact production process of Coca-Cola. The Coca-Cola company closely guards the recipe for the most famous soft drink on the planet. Nevertheless, it is possible to witness one stage of the beverage production, the final stage where Coke is bottled. The bottles arrive at the plant directly from the company that manufactures them. Nevertheless, the containers are still washed to prevent the introduction of harmful substances. During this time, purified water, which comprises 86% of the drink, is mixed with a special extract in a separate container. Concentrated sugar syrup is then added. The bottles are carbonated and placed into a machine that fills them with the resulting liquid. It's a simple process, but still enjoyable to watch. By the way, did you know that 1.8 billion bottles of Coke are sold every day worldwide? That's an astounding number. I'm sure it's all due to some secret ingredient that keeps people coming back for this black soft drink. What do you think that ingredient is? Share your thoughts in the comments and stay tuned because there are many more interesting food production processes worth exploring. Let's continue. Number 7. Salem Tea Not every tea in the world can compete with Salem Tea. It's one of the most globally recognizable brands, and Sri Lanka is one of the world's leading tea-producing countries. It's even possible that many of you watching this video are enjoying Salem Tea right now, but how is it made, and what techniques are employed? Tea leaves in Sri Lanka are harvested from plantations that have been established since the 19th century. Traditional tea production techniques are followed in this country. Initially, the harvested leaves are placed on a conveyor belt. Warm air is blown onto them from below, at a temperature of 32 to 40 degrees Celsius. It takes 4 to 8 hours to remove excess moisture from the leaves. The next step is curling, which is done using a large machine with a rollerball. Here, the leaves are subjected to significant pressure, causing them to curl up and release their juice. This is the final stage of Salem tea production involving machines. All that remains is to lay the raw material out on a flat surface and leave it in a cool, dark, and damp room where the fermentation process takes place. At the end of the fermentation process, all that's left is to dry the tea and pack it. Number 6. Bread Bread, often referred to as the staff of life, is a product available in virtually any grocery store. Moreover, bread is one of the few products that consistently appears on grocery shelves as fresh as possible. But what happens before bread reaches the stores and how is it made in factories? Let's take a closer look. Initially, the dough is prepared in a specialized shop in its original form. The dough is a lump that bears little resemblance to bread, so it must undergo several stages of processing. First, the dough mass moves along a conveyor line. The rollers on the conveyor mechanically process the dough layer, making it progressively thinner. To prevent the mass from sticking to the surfaces, flour is sprinkled on top. When the dough reaches the desired thickness, special blades cut it lengthwise and crosswise. Now the pieces of future loaves of bread are already moving along the belt. Then, a specialized machine gives them the desired shape. In the footage, you can see a rounded shape. After that, the pieces need to rest for a while. This process is called proofing. During this stage, the dough begins to ferment. Following proofing, several more steps occur including baking the loaves and allowing them to cool. Afterward, the loaves of bread are packaged and sent to grocery shelves. Number 5. Gingerbread Gingerbread is a very ancient treat, with the first written mention dating back to 350 BC. In ancient times, gingerbread resembled honey cakes flavored with spices. Our ancestors had to spend a lot of time preparing them. Nowadays, we can simply go to the store and choose any package of gingerbread we like. But how are these treats made today? We should be grateful for automated machines like these. 
They autonomously mix all the ingredients for future gingerbread to the right consistency. Once the mixture is ready, the equipment rolls out the dough into a wide, even sheet. It's interesting to note that the equipment used in the next stage of production closely resembles cookie cutters found in stores and kitchens everywhere throughout the production process. The dough moves along a conveyor belt. Afterward, a worker removes the excess dough, which is then sent for recycling. The future gingerbread enters the oven to be transformed into finished confectionery products. Number four, pasta. How do you think pasta is made? Perhaps using massive machines or conveyor belts. It's a logical assumption because it's believed that nearly all products are produced using large machines. However, in the case of pasta, that's not always necessary. In these images, you can see a machine called Dolly 2, manufactured by La Manfarina, an Italian company. The machine has an unusual appearance, resembling an advanced meat grinder and occupies very little space. Dolly 2 is one of the most compact pasta extruders on the market today. This equipment can fit on any standard table, significantly increasing the production capacity of many manufacturing companies, including small ones. Regarding the pasta production process itself, in the case of Dolly 2, it's simple and fast. The necessary ingredients are poured into the loading compartment, called a hopper, and mixed until they form dough. From the hopper, the dough goes into the extruder, which shapes the mass into various types of pasta. While this technology is efficient, it's important to note that it's not suitable for industrial-scale production because such a machine can only produce about three and a half to four and a half kilograms of fresh pasta per hour. Number three, soft cheese. Soft cheese is one of those products where large and sophisticated machines are essential. Here's a production line for soft cheese. The main feature of this line is that it consists of a series of different machines, each with its unique set of functions. All equipment is interconnected on a line where the raw material gradually transforms into a finished product. The production of soft cheese begins in the cheese bath, where curdling, cutting, and mechanical drying of the cheese grains occur. In the next module of the line, most of the whey is drained from the total mass. Afterward, the grain mixture is placed under the distribution plate, filling the molds with the raw material. The last piece of equipment on the line is the packaging machine production line, tilt mechanism. This mechanism plays a crucial role in finally separating the molds and starting the shaping of the finished product. The molds are stacked on top of each other and then tilted. At this stage, the molds are turned over multiple times. Interestingly, this process can be done either manually or automatically. Number two, beef production. Beef production is impressive in its scale and the smoothness of the process. The entire process is very complicated and time-consuming, so I'll only talk about the first stage, butchering. After slaughtering, an animal is suspended by its shin bones, and in this position, the carcass begins its movement on the production line. Next, the skin is removed from it in one fell swoop, thanks to a chain reeling device and several cuts. After draining excess blood and removing the innards, the next step can be taken. At this stage, the carcass is cut into two halves with a special sawing device. The resulting pieces are carefully washed and then evaluated for quality to determine the grade of meat. The marked product undergoes an airflow treatment and is sent to a cooling and drying facility. The product is kept in the refrigerated compartment for some time, after which the carcass halves are dismantled into components for further packaging. Number one, technology in the food industry. Technology in the food industry isn't just about the machines that produce the products. It also includes the machines that package the finished product. This stage of production is no less important because, in the modern world, food is produced on a massive scale. Not only do we have to produce the products quickly, but we also have to pack them rapidly so that they can be sent to stores as soon as possible. Humans are not well suited for this kind of work, so incredibly efficient robots are often used in factories to pack food. The equipment you see in the footage now is not designed for food production. It's responsible for quickly and efficiently packing the product being produced into boxes. 
In this case, the waffles are being packed by robots created by a Japanese company called Funak. The first robot uses a unique air vision visual detection system, enabling the robotic arm to work in tandem with even the fastest conveyor belts on the planet. The waffles are first picked up and then stack on the other conveyor belt. A second robotic arm moves the stacks into a box. These robots work together very efficiently. Humans couldn't even come close to competing with these machines and their speed. That's all, guys. Which production process surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.